Coming up, how to install new drum pads, drum pads, drum pads, and drum brakes on a Toyota Hilux CUN 26R 2005 to 2014, I think it is. Whatever, yeah, you know the ones, the, the D4D. Um, let's get stuck into it. Hi guys, Bling Bling Bob here from Hunt Shoot Off Road. And I wasn't gonna film this, but I had some dramas, and so I thought I'd talk you through the dramas. And then when I went to watch it on YouTube to see how to sort out the dramas, there wasn't a video for it, so hence I'm gonna have to video this so that someone doesn't get in the same predicament as me. What I will say is though, do not mess with your brakes. If you don't know what you're doing, um, your family safety is at risk and always seek a professional to do this for you. However, there's a small number of you that are gonna do this anyway, and uh, this is just some guidance in some of the problem shooting that I had to go through to do it myself. So, it's fantastic weather for it. It's just started raining. I don't know if you can see, it's like it's like proper raining. I don't have any real undercover area. I'm uh, just working in my driveway. I don't have much room. You know, the only undercover area I got is uh, is here, which was gonna turn to mud any second now. And um, look, I just thought I'd run through what I needed to do this. And um, basically, tire iron is gonna make the job much quicker. Um, need some multi grips. This is to hold some of the springs. Um, I've got the Allen key to fit this M8 bolt, which is to help crack the drum off. Uh, some needle nose pliers. This was also for pulling a spring, which you'll see later. Um, a jack, that's all I've got. I don't have any fancy ones. Um, you'll also need some kind of flat screwdriver to crack open the, um, I don't know what you call it, the little cap thing. I'll show you in a second. Um, at least two cans of Pepsi, one gun branded cooler, some brake cleaner and a clean rag, which I'm gonna throw in the car now because it is actually raining. And um, look, we'll start, I'll just show you. If you look in your caps, this is for our Toyota Hilux, obviously. You just wanna crack open this thing. Get that off before you start. Got my Aussie steel caps on, ready to rock and roll. Top right the front wheels. Crack the wheel nuts. Lift it just enough to get it off the ground. I don't know if we can see that. Now you might not need to do this, but I'm gonna show you what you can do. There are two spots, one here and one here that fits the M8 thread. So if you haven't had them off recently, should have heard it crack then, you can use this to um, Separate the drum from the from the axle. Can't quite see that one.
Okay, you can see here, my drums are absolutely shagged. There's like a, maybe a half a millimeter um, lip on the edge there. You can see there's massive grooves in there. The pads aren't worn down to the steel or anything like that, but I mean, they're very thin. They should have been replaced a long time ago. Um, don't let them get to this state. I'm just gonna film over where the springs are for you guys. So you can see this spring here, this is the one that caught me off guard. It's actually attached to the circle at the back there. You've got the last spring that goes on. This one here, which goes down to the back there from behind. These are the retaining clips and springs, very different to the old style ones. And one more spring at the back that mounts from the front that goes behind here. And then you've got also the handbrake, um, I guess you just call it the handbrake cable. And also the handbrake automatic tightening contraption with the thing here. Um, and there's also one more spring here that I will uh, show you how to do. This pin, uh, you can put your fingers on it from the back. So, just pushing on it with both sides of the needle nose pliers. gonna remove this spring here before I lose it now hopefully I can get this on camera okay I just need to remove this spring under here now so we'll see how we go This is where the wire cutters come in handy, just to peel that spring back. Okay, before you race in and install the new pads, just really have a good look and make sure that that they're identical in every way. I have had it in the past. I bought some pads from Repco for a Honda Civic and they were not identical and I had to end up reinstalling my old brakes and put them back in. So generally I'll just stack them on top like that and just make sure everything lines up, everything's identical and um, the other side was perfectly fine um, you know effectively everything looks the same um, and that's about it so should be good to go now
before I start, I'm just going to screw the uh, automatic nut, I don't know what you call it, uh, all the way in. Okay, I installed the um, this pin to help me get the handbrake in. You got two people, you can do it without this, like really easy. But I found this the easiest way to get the, I don't know, the retaining, retaining spring, I guess you might call it. I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, the brake there. Okay, it took me a lot of messing around to work this out. This end goes up the end with in the hole behind this plate. This end goes in the other one. So we're going to hook that in first. Grab the other brake. Put that through the elongated eyelet. I'm going to stretch this apart. Okay, so it's in the notch. Now we're going to remove that in there. Try not to damage your grommets there. Okay. Okay, both of them are in position now. We can uh, reinstall the pins. This is the best time to install this one here. So it clips in that groove I mentioned earlier and on that spring up the back. Piece of cake. You can just see it just there and going up the back there. There's not much light. Okay, before I cover this up, I'm just gonna show you what's gonna happen. This is a one-way like ratchet thing. So once this has tension, it can't spin in. So that's what's automatically tightening it. So what we're gonna do, as I began to mention before, there's a rubber grommet on the back here. So I've just taken that off. Looks like that, don't lose it. Keeps most of the dust out. So once we're finished and we put the um, drum on, we can reach through from the back here with a screwdriver and we can twist that like upwards to rotate this around like that because it can obviously rotate past that and we can tighten that. So I'll get into that in a bit but I just wanted to give you a visual so you know what's happening later when we go to do it. Just some uh, Super Cheap Auto brake cleaner to get any of the packaging grease off of the brake to stop it from rusting. It'll stuff up the pads. It seemed pretty good. It didn't seem like there was anything on there, but you never be too sure.
quick tip when you're doing your wheel nuts, like you just saw me just do then, um, do like a triangular pattern where you can. Six studs, I do normally do from there to there, and uh, the other the other triangle. Um, never do them up with uh, a rattle gun, because when you're on the side of the road, it can be very difficult to get them off again. So if you do have a rattle gun, just sort of rattle them up, and then finish them off with the wheel brace, um, because you need to be able to remove it with whatever you have on in your car, so you should always do it up with whatever you have in your car. So. Um, that's why I did that. Um, obviously, I don't have a rattle gun either, but uh, that's the real reason why I did that. And then you see I went around and checked every single wheel nut to make sure that they were all tight. After you do like a tank of fuel, just double check them. Make sure that they haven't come loose or you've missed something. Car's a mess, but I don't care. Oh, boys, guys, check this out. Laser, what do they call it? Laser rangefinder. Aldi next weekend, $159. Supposedly good for a thousand meters. Anyway, that's uh, the 6th of April. Just lift your handbrake to like a reasonable position. Um, mine used to come like pretty much to the top. So just bring it up a bit, then tighten the auto tightener I told you. I'll just go around the back and off. Okay, so we're going to adjust the brake. Here's the hole that we were looking through earlier. Pretty slow process. Just keep going until, uh, I guess, until it's like firm, and that's when it should be. The brake should be taking up with the park brake. Doesn't matter if you don't do it all the way, because the automatic feature of it should take it up once you're within an appropriate length of it. But uh, you certainly couldn't do it just by pumping the handbrake. I don't think. There we go, I think that's done. We'll go check it out in the car. Okay, I did both sides, and now it pulls up sort of right where I had it. I did have to just come in, let go, pull the handbrake up a few times, and then put it back where I wanted it, and go and re-tighten it again, um, just so that the pads could sort of center and settle themselves. Probably when I take the car for a drive, it'll probably come up a bit higher and slowly work its way. But look guys, it's it's pretty easy job. Um, bit finicky. Um, there's a couple of frustrating times, even, even for me, especially when I'm trying to film it and get it right, get the angle right for you guys, and and all that sort of stuff like that. Dirty job, covered in filth. But uh, look, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure you give us a, a massive like. I think in this bottom corner here, there's a subscribe button, or at the end, there's a, a big circle that you can also hit and subscribe. Give me some feedback. Let me know. Did I put in too much detail? Not enough detail. Have I missed something? Is there something else you want me to show? I don't know if you don't give me the appropriate feedback and I can uh, try and do it for the future videos. Look, that's it guys. Until the next one, catch us later and get them big balls.